If you have watched my previous videos on the Osiris Rex mission, you already know some of the basics of this amazing project. And today, I have some head scratcher updates. In this video, we'll take a look at the latest news and updates on the Osiris Rex mission, which collected samples from a near Earth asteroid named Bennu and returned them to Earth. We'll see what the scientists have discovered so far, why they are puzzled by some of the features of the dust, and what questions they hope to answer in the future. This is a very important and exciting topic because it could help us understand the origin and evolution of Bennu and the solar system and how it could benefit the scientific, planetary, and public domains. So, are you ready to explore the secrets of asteroid dust? Let's get started. The first thing we need to know is how the sample canister was transported from Utah to NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas, where it was opened and analyzed by the scientists. It was then transferred to a special laboratory, where it was placed in a nitrogen-filled glove box to prevent contamination. The scientists had to follow strict protocols and use special tools to access the canister and its contents. This was a very delicate and complex process because the canister and the dust were very valuable and fragile and could easily be lost or damaged during the extraction process. Scientists had to use gentle techniques and avoid touching the dust directly. They also had to be careful not to use up too much of the sample as they only had about 60 grams of dust to work with, which is equivalent to about two candy bars. As you can imagine, this was not an easy task and the scientists faced some challenges along the way. One of the first challenges that the scientists encountered was that two screws that held the canister lid in place were jammed and had to be removed manually. This took several hours and required a lot of patience and precision. But that was not the only challenge. There was something else that made the extraction process even more difficult. The first analysis of the dust revealed some surprising and puzzling features that the scientists did not expect to see. For instance, the dust had a bluish sheen that was visible to the naked eye, which could indicate that the dust reflects light differently than the asteroid surface. It also had a rare combination of elements, such as iron, nickel, cobalt, and chromium, that are usually found in metallic asteroids, not carbonaceous ones like Bennu. The dust also contained hydrated minerals and organic molecules, which could suggest that Bennu was once part of a larger body that had water and possibly life. These features are important and interesting because they could shed light on the origin and evolution of Bennu and the solar system. For example, the bluish sheen could indicate that the dust has been altered by space weathering, such as exposure to solar radiation and micrometeorites, which could affect its chemical and physical properties. The rare combination of elements could suggest that Bennu is a remnant of a larger and more diverse parent body that was destroyed by collisions or other processes. The hydrated minerals and organic molecules could imply that Bennu was once warm and wet, and that it could have delivered the building blocks of life to Earth or other planets. But these features also raise some questions and challenges for the scientists, because they do not match the expectations and the models that they had before. For example, how did Bennu acquire these elements and molecules? How did they survive the harsh conditions of space? How do they compare with other asteroid samples? These are some of the questions that the scientists hope to answer in the future. But how will they do that? What are the next steps that they plan to take with the dust? And what are the future prospects and the potential benefits of the mission? Let's find out in the next section. The next steps that the scientists plan to take with the dust are to distribute it to other laboratories around the world, where more than 150 researchers will conduct more detailed and comprehensive analyses using different techniques and instruments. Scientists will also compare the dust with other asteroid samples, such as those from Japan's Hayabusa and Hayabusa 2 missions, which collected samples from different types of asteroids, namely Itokawa and Ryugu. This will allow the scientists to better understand the diversity and similarity of asteroids in the solar system. This is a very exciting and promising prospect because it could help us advance the scientific knowledge of asteroids, improve the planetary defense strategies, and inspire the public interest and curiosity in space exploration. By studying the dust from Bennu, 
the scientists hope to learn more about the origin, composition, and potential hazards of asteroids, especially those that could impact Earth in the future. Bennu has a small chance of colliding with Earth in the late 22nd century, and OSIRIS-REx has helped to refine its orbit and trajectory. The mission has also demonstrated the feasibility and the challenges of landing on and sampling an asteroid, which could pave the way for future missions that could deflect or redirect an asteroid if needed. It has also captured the public's imagination and curiosity as it has shared stunning images and videos of Bennu and its surface and invited the public to participate in naming the asteroid and its features. As you can see, the OSIRIS-REx mission is not only a scientific achievement, but also a cultural and social one. It has shown us the beauty and the mystery of the universe, and the power and the responsibility of humanity. It has also shown us that there is still so much to learn and explore, and that we are not alone in this quest. But before we end this video, I want to leave you with one final thought. What if the dust from Bennu could reveal not only the secrets of life on Earth, but also the secrets of life beyond Earth? What if there are other worlds out there that have similar or different forms of life and that we could someday visit or communicate with? What if we are part of a larger cosmic family and that we have a role and a purpose in it? These are some of the questions that the OSIRIS-REx mission could inspire us to ask and to pursue. And who knows, maybe one day we will find the answers. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new and interesting. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below. What do you think of the OSIRIS-REx mission and its findings? Do you have any questions or suggestions for future videos? Let us know in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to get notified when I post new videos. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more updates. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.